So it's early morning and today is Paul's birthday and I've got the best surprise organised for him. We're going to a place today which is really, really special and with us we've got his two brothers, David and Noel, my sister Chrissy and David and Noel's wives, Connie and Cara. It's going to be awesome. We're on our way somewhere for Paul's birthday. We Paul's are. driving. I am. Hello, everyone. I can't look around because I have to drive. Yes. But hello. Eyes on the road. Yep, yep. We've got David next to me. Yep. Hi, and everyone. We've got, <laughs> you may notice I'm wearing my uh, beret from Gay Patty. And in the front seat, Cara. Hello, I am. Also wearing the beret. <laughs> <laughs> and we are talking in the outrageous and French we are accent. All speaking in outrageous French accent. Okay, <laughs> stay tuned. Here we go. Ah, because we've got a couple of minutes. Yeah. Paul, do you want to just explain where we are? Um, now, I forget the exact name. Was it Karakin? Karakin. So we're at the Karakin, Karakin? Uh, it looked like Cockatoo um, Conservation Centre. And the uh, symbol out the front of the picture was of a red-tailed black cockatoo, which is arguably my favourite bird, certainly one of, one of my favourite birds. And Caroline has been very, very clever in, in choosing this, this location. And how many types of black cockatoo are there? You, Shall we ask the birder? Yeah, let's ask the birder. No. <laughs> Look, Cara, Cara might know. There's Barnabies, uh, uh, Carnabies, 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 Bowdens, um, the um, red-tailed black cockatoo, the glossy black cockatoo. Um, Sulfur crested? Oh, how many? So I'm just talking about the black, black one. Black cockatoos. Black cockatoos. I think that might be all of them. And um, the fourth, glossy, the glossy. Black. There's a yellow one that lives over east. Yellow tailed black. Oh, yellow tailed black. Yeah. yeah. So we only get the three here, I think. Don't yes. We? Yes. So I the, think there's three the, here in WA, and an additional two in the eastern yeah. states. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. So this is Karakin. So Karakin is a huge not-for-profit centre. It specialises in the rescue, rehab, release of our three. Beautiful, threatened and endemic species of black cockies found here in Southwest WA. Being a not-for-profit, we're, we're pretty much entirely volunteer run. So there's just three part-time staff, uh, about 160 volunteers. So a huge volunteer effort. This site's massive, 41 acres. Did used to be an old wildlife park. Um, so if you grew up here in Perth, you, you probably came here. It was home of the koala park. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. So when you walk around, you'll see uh, some of their old exhibits and, and things. Um, but yeah, so now it's a black cocky rehab centre. Um, but yeah, we do have some of their animals, so when you walk around, uh, keep your eyes out because the place is completely enclosed. So we have free ranging peacocks, guinea fowls, and emus, which are wherever they so choose to be today. So, so historically, mm. that's why we call them the rainbirds. Our carnivores are with us in Perth Peel here. June, July, they leave. They head inland to the wheat belt to breed. January, February, they come back to Perth where they feed in our bank sea woodlands. Now, we love living near the coast, so most of those woodlands are gone now, and they go out into the wheat belt. 94% of that's gone. Humongous land clearing. They live out their lives as ambassadors for their over east friends, because a lot of people in Perth don't know there's, there's black coffees on the east coast. So the only two yellow tails we have, you'll notice very large, largest of all our black coffees. But you'll still notice, Opal, here's our female, White beak, uh, Yeti, who's doing sexy boys, huh. talking to himself up the back there somewhere. He's got a black beak. He's he's the male. Uh, looks so similar to our white tails because these were the original species. I think roughly about 1.3 million years ago, mm. yellow tails came into the southwest. Basically, got cut off through the Nullarbor over time. Like anything, then you have two populations. You are breeding with yourself, selecting for different things, eating different foods. So ours got their own genetics got a bit smaller, went white, uh, and now just genetically and, and just um, geographically, they're just completely separate species. But a lot better. Yeah. 
hear all the frogs. <laughs> I really hope it will time it well because it just before it's dawn we get um, heaps of red tails and a really big flock of red tails. Um, probably like 30 of them, um, which is a big red tail flock. Like red tails are smaller family groups. They come in to drink from our kangaroo water trough. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. I hope they'll come in a bit later. So, gun nuts. Right? Yep. Gun nuts, merry nuts, honky nuts, whatever you want to call them. All three species eat them because they've got different shaped beaks or eat them differently. You know, you can walk through a bush like this, not even see a black cockatoo. Not only tell black cockatoos did this, you can also tell which species did it. So starting off with our, with our bow dance, um, long beak, that's why it's got that long beak. Straight to the top here, scoops the seeds out, doesn't damage that nut at all. Only way you can tell it's been eaten is all these little marks on the bottom. That's where its bottom bill holds it, top bill goes through. We'll turn that nut like a doctor, surgical precision to remove those seeds. Um, like that nut was here last October when I first made this little pile. So like, <laughs> um, you can see months, years later, you can still tell who's been there. Mm. Next up, your carnivore. Beak's a bit shorter, can't do that. They have to go around the lip, snip it off like a can. So we call that the can opener method. They're gonna take that whole lip off first, then eat those seeds. Lastly, your forest red tail. Scientific name Naso means nose, big head, big beak, big crushing power, just smashed into pieces. So these ones are the ones you notice all the time up here in the hills because they're yeah. big and messy. Yeah. Um, because of that, they all eat different amounts. Bordons will eat about 90 a day. Carnabees are in the middle, about 100. Red tails, 120, sometimes up to 130 because they're putting so much energy into mm, opening that. Mm, yeah. Mm. yeah, so they eat a lot. Um, Pink cushion hakea, pretty um, common one for people to plant because it's stunning. Its flower looks like coronavirus, like big red flower, <laughs> yellow pins off it. Stunning. Those flowers turn into these uh, big nuts, which the cockies love. Uh, oh, here you go, there's heaps of them. Uh, these big nuts here. Um, wow. Over here, different types of hakeas. This is what we call wavy leaf hakea. See, it's just finishing flowering now. That will turn into these little nuts, and I love it. I'm going to show you some more hakeas in a second because the worst thing we hear all the time is people want to help and they go, oh, I can't go plant these big gum trees, so I can't help. I live in the suburbs. Hakeas, so many. You can get much smaller ones than this as well. Even the banksias you love, you know, usually grow 10 meters. A lot of your native nurseries grow them now. Yeah? Dwarf, they grow one or two meters. Still fruit, still flower. If you've got like a meter by meter bit of lawn or verge or whatever you can get cocky food in that yeah. helps huge even up here in the hills in this huge forest they come down foraging on these little hakeas so let alone yeah. in the suburbs you know where the, the oh. yellow tails would eat that as well oh uh, yeah they love the hakeas and banksias. yeah and you have um so the, their hakeas that are native to the southwest i'm sure there's obviously you'll have different types of hakeas over Oh, look, pink and greys, um, pretty common here in Perth. There's a couple of major Mitchells in here as well. A lot of these came to us, they were confiscated as well. So that's why they're super friendly because unfortunately people stole them from the wild and, and reared them for the pet trade. Uh, living out their lives with us, we built this over a few years ago, it was a huge upgrade for them. You can see they're getting a bit older now, they get their wrinkly eyes. Yeah, it's got skizmo. Yeah, it's a cute hello. <laughs> Look at them. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of cockatiels down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y
and give you some some of the higher up branches, Joe. Hi, right? Joe. Yeah. 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 Here you go, Joe. Like, like Jamie with the jaw. Oh, he <laughs> does. Good chatter. Hold on to it. There you go. Mm. Oh, that's a reptile for each other. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you your nails draw if your finger is? Uh, yeah, most. It's, a lot of them are hard to tell, but um, like Jojo's our big male, red, uh, red, uh, grey. So he's the obvious one. Wombat's our male red. <laughs> and then, yeah, we have a he's bit, on his, mm. kind of Amy checking you out as well. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Is that nice? That is, yeah. Just a little bit. Oh, that's not going to be tough. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll just tell you, if you want to go out and watch what's just holding the floor, please. So if you go around, you can see the red cards are feeding in the jarret. How you going? You all right? Yeah, show us your bottom. There you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at him. So, yeah, so we have two types of dingoes here. So the ones down here, these little ginger one, that's what we call an alpine dingo. They're the East, your, your East Coast mates. So from the New South Wales region below the, the snow line there in, in the, the hills. Shorter, stockier, much longer fur. Mm. But they're from a cooler place. So you come back here in summer, they'll, they'll molt out that out of the now. So they're fluffy. And the ones behind us are uh, WA dingoes. Up Ozzy will always come and lay on the floor right here for me to pick her up. So she's really out of it. And I'll get her out of the way. Who's your mate there? Yeah. Look, he's a left hander. You're a left hander? Yeah. Got them all. Look at Mama Bear over there. She's got them all. This is Kara. This is my sister, Chrissy. Yeah, we met. Hello, you got uh, some? Yeah, young boy. So, the big spotty, specky tiger stripe. Again, all the female and the young. So, this boy, look like that. So, it's three or four. That's why there's red tails flying over. You see him as a three, mm. mum, dad, baby. So, it'll be dad, mum, and the oh, juvenile who looks like mum. And so, mm. if they are a young male, eventually they've got to change their colours, right? The one on your shoulder is three and a half years old. It's a juvenile male. So, at the moment, it's going through its transition. Yeah. So you can see all its new feathers coming through in its molt, uh, a solid black, it's losing all the spot speckles. And you'll see if it flies in its tail, it's got both solid red and tiger stripes. Both young boy, three to five years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you come back in a couple of years, this, this little fella here, Bala, will look like uh, Henry here. This is actually his mum here. <laughs> he was born in here by accident. Oh, excellent. Uh, <laughs> it's never by accident. <laughs> there you go, Oz. Awesome. Really loud. Oh. Do you want some footage of you with? Oh, oh. I so like to eat the inside. Yeah, yeah just seeds in there. Three or four seeds. I smack them open, just get the seeds out. That's what I got them big heads for. No, he just wants to eat you. No, I don't see if I got in here. Oh, yeah. I've got another one. One here. Come here. Come here. Oh, you're fussy, McFussy pants. Don't be wrong with me. Does he want me to hold it while he... Oh, Ozzy's just a bit fussy sometimes. He's being a fussy, fussy pink. 
What about this one? This one's already like half open. It's an easy one. Yeah, see. Oh, Shot yeah. glass method. Oh, it's already nearly open. Oh.